Here we go again, flying in the face of controversy and placing myself right into the den of lions, throwing caution to the wind, along with any other metaphors you can think of. What is the best air gun calibre for pest control and other things? <laughs> And <laughs> welcome to AAR on Air. Yes, today I want to look at what caliber air gun you should be using for pest control. Well, I can imagine there are itchy fingers out there already getting close to the keyboard to put everybody straight on which caliber they should be using, categorically, undoubtedly, and absolutely. Well, if only it were that simple. Let's take a look, shall we? First, let me remove air pistols from this particular equation because predominantly they are not powerful enough for this particular purpose. Coupled with the simple fact that pistols are inherently not as accurate as an air rifle and not as likely to give a clean dispatch. Right then, if we've established that a rifle is more suited to the task, what are the calibres in question? We have the standard 177 and 22 calibers, but there are lots of other options too, such as 0.20 and 0.25. Then we get into the larger 0.30 heavyweights and even continue up as far as 0.50 or 50 cal as they love to be called. Let's also consider the power output of the rifles because this has a big bearing on the choice of caliber ammunition for the task. Sub 12 foot pound to start with. This is the UK restricted power level. I say UK, but I'm really excluding Scotland here because they have their own laws. Normally, at this level, no license is required. You simply need to be over 18 to buy one. The choice predominantly here is the 177 and 22 calibers. And this is where we hit straight into the main point of argument. I've already heard so many sides to this one, such as 177 for feathers and 22 for fur, intimating that if the pest is the flying type, then you should use a 177. But for rodents and the like, then a 22 is preferable. The problem here is, I've seen some pretty tough pigeons in my time, and it sometimes feels like you need a cannon to take them out. My first point in the argument is to dispatch it cleanly, you first got to hit it. So to my mind accuracy has to play a major part in this discussion. Here is where the 177 often has the advantage over the larger 22. Because the 177 is lighter and travels faster in a flatter trajectory than the heavier 22 which has a tendency to arc and as such has to be compensated for more over changing distances or ranges. So it's important to get all of this right in a calibre that is more susceptible to arcs. If you do, it means you're more likely to hit the target you're aiming at, assuming the gun itself and you yourself are capable of being accurate. This is, of course, where the practice comes in. Assuming you can hit it, we now need to check out how hard you can hit it. In other words, time to look at retained energy. Don't worry, I'm not going to go in depth on details like ballistic coefficients, etc. But there will be quite a few statistics. I'm going to give you some examples of pellets out at different distances, bearing in mind the more retained energy, the harder it's going to hit the target. So the heavier it is should mean it hits harder. But of course, the bigger the calibre, the slower the pellet travels which does have a tendency to take some of the sting out of it. What you really want is a heavy projectile travelling at high speeds, but this of course would break the UK power limits. It is of course possible on higher powers, but we'll look at that later. For now then, 177 versus 22 from a sub 12 foot pound rifle measured at the barrel. 
In this example, an average 177 pellet weighs in at 8.44 grains and will leave the barrel at, say, 795 feet per second, resulting in a measured power of 11.84 foot-pound, which is a fair power figure for a sub-12 foot-pound rifle. By direct comparison, an average weight 2.2 pellet would be 15.89 grains. This will leave the barrel at a lower speed of 579 feet per second to achieve the same result of 11.84 foot-pounds. So considerably lower velocity from the heavier 2.2 for the same power level. It's when it gets out at ranges that we can really see the difference in those power figures. So, the same projectile but out at 20, 30 and 40 metres. This then is what happens as a direct comparison between the two most widely used pellets for these two calibres. Just before the power levels at target, let's look at that arc point first. As you can see, because of a lower pellet velocity, the 0.22 pellet, shown here in green, has a much bigger arc to its trajectory, peaking at a not insignificant 7.46 centimetres from level, as it were. On the flip side, the 177 travelling faster has a flatter arc of almost half of the 2.2 at 4.4 centimetres. This basically means that shooting at distances less than the 40 meter zero, as shown here, the 177 is going to need less adjustment on the scope, and in some cases may even hit without any adjustment at all. The 22, on the other hand, could miss entirely if no adjustment was made. That said, if the adjustment is made, then the hitting power of the 22 is greater than the smaller, lighter. 177 pellet. Back to those power levels now. At 20 metres, the 177 holds on to 9.05 foot pounds. At 30 metres, it retains 7.97 foot pounds. And at 40 metre target range, carries 7.04 foot pounds. The 22, on the other hand, will keep hold of 10.02 foot pounds at 20 metres, 9.22 foot pounds at 30, and 8.48 at 40 metres. So, on average, hanging on to around one to one and a half foot pounds more energy to help with that clean dispatch. But don't forget, you're still going to need to hit it first if you're wanting to use that extra energy. And a better placed shot, even with the lower energy, will be worth far more than a near miss with more power probably not resulting in that clean dispatch you were looking for. I've hit pigeons before with 40 foot-pounds and, if hit in the wrong place, they don't go down instantly. But I've had a well-placed headshot from a 177 sub-12 foot-pounds at 40 metres and it was lights out instantly. Let's now throw two other calibres into the mix. These two are often overlooked by sub-12 foot-pound shooters, probably in part for good reason. But shall we see if we can change a few hearts and minds, maybe? Point 0.20 then, to start with. This is the perfect middle ground between the 177 and the 2.2 argument. It has a heavier weight than the basic 177, and yet a flatter trajectory than a 2.2, Sounds like the perfect mix then. Let's take a look at those power figures and over distances, shall we? The average weight of a 0.20 pellet is 13.73 grains and will leave the barrel at 623 feet per second, giving the same 11.84 foot-pounds matching the power in those other examples, again to meet with the UK limit and requirements. It's only when it starts to get out at distances we see the difference becoming evident. The 0.20 will carry 10.01 foot-pounds at 20 metres, 9.21 foot-pounds at 30 and 8.48 at 40. So it's almost exactly the same as the 2.2 but with a higher velocity which brings the arc down to 6.45 centimetres. So, flatter trajectory, like the 177, and pretty much the same hitting power as the 22. 
So why isn't this the go-to calibre? <laughs> Good question. One I'll come back to with obvious answers, maybe. Now, before we move on to the noticeably heavier calibres, I think at this point we should consider the fact that, so far, we've only looked at the standard weight pellets in these three, so far, calibres. But different weights are available and are used. They are likely to change the information so far obtained. 177, for example. These pellets are available in a whole range of weights and manufacturers and pellet designs. Looking at JSB alone at this point, there are 7.33 grains, 7.87, 8.44, 10.34 and 13.42, and even as high as 15.89 grains which are rather aptly known as the beasts, and which are as heavy as the standard 2-2 pellet. This may well blow the whole discussion completely out of the water, or not. Let's just throw some of these pellets into the power figure list and see how they compare. Now there is a mass of figures here showing the different weights of 177 pellets on the left hand side in grains, they're all then set at 11.84 foot-pounds at the barrel to keep this consistent. The next column shows the feet per second, and as you would expect, the heavier pellet, the slower the feet per second, and in the end column, the bigger the arc. The other columns show the energy at target out at 20, 30 and 40 metres. Well, if we're looking at 177 at differing weights, we should do the same with the 2.2 calibre then. Again, using JSBs as an example, these come in 13.42 grain, 14.35, 15.89, which is a standard, 18.13, 25.38, and again up to the beast at a whopping 33.95 grain. These weights, though, realistically off for the higher power guns rather than the sub 12 foot pound one. Let's take a look at the power figures again, shall we? Bearing in mind the weights we've just discussed. The 0.22 caliber figures then, showing the weight of the pellet, all set at the same 11.84 foot pounds at the barrel, then the energy retained at 20, 30 and 40 meters, and finally the arc to give you the size of the adjustment you're likely to need to adjust for. I realise there is a whole host of information here and I will let this stand at the end and put it on the Facebook page for those who want to spend a few moments to digest this information. Now at this point I will return to the discussion around the 0.20 calibre and here we find one of its major shortfalls by comparison to the other two. In the JSB comparison test they are available in 13.73 grains. And, well, that's it. It sounds a little like Henry Ford's argument. You can have whatever colour you like, as long as it's black. <laughs> this may be in part why you don't see many .20 calibre guns. And again, it may be because there aren't many .20 calibre guns that they don't produce a variety of different weight pellets in .20. Either way, it's a shame, really. So, enough said about the 0.20. We do need to throw into the mix, very briefly, pellet shapes and types, because pellets are available in all sorts of fancy designs, often with the promise of major improvements in stopping power. Well, I really can't test all of the designs, but I have tested several in the past, and the basic rule of thumb is... Firstly, different pellets suit different barrels, and what works well in one may not hit a barn door at point-blank range in another. So it is, to a certain extent, trial and error. That said, my experience has mostly been the fancier they are, the less accurate they are. And as we've said right at the start, the first thing you have to do is hit it. One of the pellets I would recommend and I've found to suit most guns and barrels is 
the Hades. Yes, it's fancy shaped head, but it is one of the only fancy pellets I've found to be as accurate and in some circumstances more accurate than a standard Diablo. Now, it does fly in the face of logic to an extent by not carrying as much power at the target than the standard Diablo. But the expansion of the head does more damage and results in greater stopping power. And most everyone I've spoken to who uses them would agree. The good news is they are available in 22, 177 and even 0.25 which we'll be looking at later. But, sadly, at the time of putting this together, not in 0.20. I know I've only spoken about sub 12 foot pounds so far, but of course, there are higher powered air rifles out there, which does open up the argument even more. You see, a higher power 0.22, for example, will result in a higher feet per second figure and will subsequently mean a flatter trajectory, giving 177 light accuracy, but with much higher hitting power. The higher power also means you can use heavier weighted pellets to give that harder hit. It is usually a good idea to use heavier pellets because light pellets in high power rifles can cause them to go supersonic, and when they do, they lose all stability in flight and accuracy will often suffer greatly. So, a 177 FAC rated rifle is not normally going to be much more than 18 to 20 foot pounds to keep the velocity to a manageable level. A 2.2 can naturally go much higher and then you can go up to the 100 foot pound and more territory when using 0 0.25, 0 0.30 and so on because these can have as high as 50 plus grain weights. A couple of takeaways here. The first is that the higher calibers are usually best in higher power levels. Indeed, I've used 0.25 pellets in a higher power rifle and at 100 meters, put them all in a group no larger than my thumbnail. But I have used the 0.25 pellet in sub 12 foot pounds, and whilst they do retain a lot of energy, the arc is considerable, and you really need to know your distances and scope settings. Anything bigger than that is just not worth considering in sub 12 foot pounds. The other thing when we're into higher powers is the use of slugs rather than standard pellet shapes. These have a better ballistic coefficient, hold on to massive amounts of energy at target, and in my experience are exceptionally accurate and have fantastic deformation characteristics. But don't use them in sub 12 foot pound guns, as you're simply gonna get them stuck in your barrel most likely. They're also considerably more expensive than standard pellets too. I've already said that each gun, and indeed each barrel, will have its favourite pellets. And it's almost as Ollivander told Harry Potter, the wand chooses the wizard. Well, in this case, the barrel chooses the pellets. And sadly, you're going to need to try quite a few before you find the preferred one in some cases. That's, I suppose, where sample packs can save you buying a whole mass of full tins of pellets. I realise this review hasn't given you the definitive answer to which calibre you need. Hopefully it's giving you enough information, information uh -huh, to be able to make your own informed choice. I realise that I have tried to make the playing field as level as possible by setting the at the barrel power figure the same across all calibres and all weights of pellets. When a heavier pellet in, say, a 177 calibre is likely, in many cases, to give a slower velocity, but can still be a higher power level at target, or indeed at the barrel, which is why sub-12 foot pound guns are set with a little bit of wiggle room or breathing space of power tolerance when they leave the factory. I have seen close to 12 foot pound rifles go well over 12 foot pounds with a heavier pellet, and the old bill don't take kindly to that. Hopefully that's cleared up that point too. Me? Well, for most of the time I prefer to shoot 177. 
for the accuracy factor. But I do have 0 0.20, 0 0.22, 0 0.25 and 0.30 guns. And I have a use and can see a need for all of them, pretty much. With regard to the feather and fur saying, personally I don't think it stands up to any kind of logical argument. Remember, the first thing you need to do is hit it. And if I could only have one rifle, I may be swayed to a 177 with the Hades pellets weighing in at 10.34 grains. That way I can use the gun for target work and still have enough hitting power with an excellently deforming pellet for that spot of pest control. But that's my opinion, and in my case, it would be used out at longer distances most of the time. However, over regular shorter distances than I shoot at, a .22 has a very strong argument. Because at shorter distances, the arc is pretty much irrelevant, which may result in this being the right tool for the job for you. Hopefully this has been of some use to you. If you've enjoyed it, please give us the old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, click the alarm bell, take a look at all this lot. And why not join in the forums and open the discussion up further, maybe. Thanks, as always, to Vector Air for supplying a load of pellets for me to do some of this testing. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe and shoot safe. And thank you so much for watching.